I said, because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me, thank you for welcoming this old bear to the Steal Away Show, and thank you for checking me out, that's got to be just about as dorky as, but what if the Pittsburgh Steelers do not pick Mims? In the first round. What if they don't pick JPJ? What if they did something different? What if the Pittsburgh Steelers walk into day two feeling pretty good about what they have at right tackle with Dan Moore Jr., who don't want to do it, and Dylan Cook, who they have a lot of, they do have investment in. So I started thinking about what could be tackles that could fall into the third round. So I'm a little fanboy, and I started falling for a fella from Missouri, Javon Foster. He is a left tackle. I don't really care about the whole Broderick needs to play left, and I'm not liking him because I want him to play right. I'm just, I don't care about, that's not me. Broderick is a better run blocker. I don't care any about that stuff. I just liked him as a tackle. So I started falling for the fellow, right? He's a Michigander. Go Michigan. Coming to you from Southwest Michigan. But uh, one one of the best things about these podcasts, the things that about the great podcasts are is that they like inspire you to have your own thought. And I wish I could do that. I do my three quarters best job at giving you a grin you know i think it was tuesday wednesday or uh, tuesday wednesday i got home or i was on my way home and somehow i got on x at an odd time follow me on x steal away show and uh i ended up seeing a post by zachary smith he's one of the hosts of, of uh the afternoon drive and he was basically putting out a post asking fans to put out questions that they would have giving talking points. And uh, I knew I was too late because it was like 3.20, 3, 3 o'clock. I don't know. It was, oh, that was probably what it was. I got off my car, got out of work on front on whatever it was, got into my car. It was like 3.30, way too late because I know they do their deal at 5. Achah! Stop. So I put in this deal. Hey, what do you guys feel about Javon Foster in the third round? You know, what's his value? What do you have any value on him, right? I knew it was too late to get onto the show, but um, I didn't think about it. I just, I like him, so I just put it out there. I had never been able to ask questions really to the show. Like, it just didn't. And uh, sure as shit, those. Guys, just made by stinking night. Because I'm Friday, I couldn't believe it. And I'm, I'm just saying, when you admire things or just whatever, dude. But they ended up answering my question at on the thing, right? And they talked about, uh, they brought it up. Hey, Steeloid uh, asks about uh, this. Uh, Javon Foster, you know, about third round. <laughs> sure, shit, fucking Alan Saunders just went. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, like all the other fans in the comments. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> A little bit, but poco, poquito. But uh, <laughs> basically, he went after. He's like, hey, I'm looking third round. I'm talking about a guy named Roger. Rosengarden, who is who I am going to talk about uh, because I think the best podcasts out there inspire us to, you know, expand our fandom, you know, like you think how the way you want to think, you know, and you like what you like to like, like this video, even if you kind of like it. <laughs> Uh, 
But I didn't rewatch the deal. Uh, but basically, from what I remember, is that he basically had said, uh, talked about uh, Rogers' athleticism and something, I believe, in the general gist. My memory is not as long as other members of my body. But I'm sure it had something to do with him playing left tackle and having to convert over to right. I think one of the things that I like so much about Jamal Foster was his lack of experience. Isn't that dumb? Like we're all in love with Mims. But um, so I had to find out about this guy because, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing it from the best. So um, I started digging into this guy. First thing is uh, he is definitely in, there's levels. You got the top three levels, you know, uh, Alt and Fuaga, uh, the other guy on the left, you know, and you got the top three on the right. Talisa Fuaga out of Oregon State. Um, Mims, who everybody would love to see as our first round draft pick. Uh, Tyler Guyton, and uh, now then there's the other level, right? He is in that other level. So I first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to find out where is he at? Like, where do all these draft people believe he's at, right? And it was pretty interesting uh, little adventure I went on. Um. First thing I saw is that PFN had a pretty good article on him, but PFN has him at 62 overall. Then I go to Draft Tech. They don't even have him in the top 100. I have to read a little bit. These are numbers. Um, ESPN had him at 74. The site Draft Buzz which uh, I know that Steelers Touchdown Under is a very fond of fan who I kind of learned a little bit from. He does mock drafts with them. They had him way out at 135. I said that I would never mention PFF on my site, but here I am. PFF had him way out at 145. I'm wondering. And then I get it down a little bit. Mel Kuyper picks Roger Rosengarten at 31, going to the San Francisco uh, 49ers in the first round. And I'm thinking, because mm, Mel, mm, you know, I'm like, mm, you smell what I'm stepping in here? This is one of the classic, they did good at their combine. Their stock is rising. Like you're supposed to put value into the combine. You know, um, it doesn't work. It, that's fast backwards. So he is, so that's the way I went into this, thinking about this guy. Like, he is in the basket of that Xavier Worthy, you know, because he, that speed. They're putting him, like, people weren't even hardly barely talking about him, like, early fourth or something, you know what I mean? Or late third, you know. They were talking about, like, that, you know, a month ago, you know. Uh, Fisk, you know, uh, from Western Michigan. Go Broncos. Where Splane was from. Uh, you know, he tested really well, and I don't think he's all that impressive of a guy. I mean, like, that's cool, but I mean, he's getting like a whole 40 position jump, 20 position jump. You know, it's like, mm, he didn't, I don't think people really thought like people, like 
NFL people thought that he was that good. He's good, but I mean, it's not like put it out on highlights, you know, and people like Mel Kuyper will um, put somebody like Roger Rosengarten um, at pick 31 for the San Francisco in the first round. Completely different, you know, but he is very unique. The thing about it is with him is that <coughs> it's his pass blocking. That is the allure of Roger Rosengard. His hand usage is uh, it, oh, you have to just I'm going to put some links down in there and it is neat. It is really nice. Like I've watched, I've been getting to watch more tape, you know, and um, he was the first offensive player who I noticed the most of that he had, like you always hear about with, with uh, commentators, uh, podcasts, you know, they talk about these counter moves, right? And you hear about him and you see him and stuff like that. But like when I saw him play, he you could see his moves, like his hand placement, like was definitely counter. Like it's just a, I mean, there are some, his hand usage is really nice, right? Uh, and in the Texas game, uh, I, I don't even understand how they didn't get in a fight. I would be so pissed if I would have been Texas. I mean, and they had a good defense. But he just showcased in that one. But um, the thing about with him is that it's so unique for a, a right tackle to have good pass blocking skills. Maybe he was the best pass protector. Better than Troy on the left, you know. But uh, it's a very unique situation, you know, to be as a right tackle. And I think that's going to have to be definitely scrutinized. It'll either be picked too early or too late, you know, by teams. That's why I'm looking at it. I did end up watching. I watched two half games and two full games. I watched uh, a little bit of him against USC and a little bit of him against Texas. When I saw him play against USC, it is almost like a joke. I don't know what USC had for a defense, but it didn't even look like valuable like tape that someone could watch because it looked like somebody that like, their defense against him was completely outclassed. It looked like a high schooler playing against a college player or um, a, a, profe a college player playing against a professional. It, it was just, it, it looked, it, he looked like he was just putting them down and just, just it was, it was, I mean, he was great. I mean, he made them look silly. He did make them look silly. So I don't know if that was just a low quality USC defense, uh, but it, they looked awful. When I watched them play Texas, now when they played Texas, they had a fun defense to watch. They really did. And he put on a show. In that game, his hand usage was just better than the next guys you know i mean like he won he won and then he won and then he won in the thickest of things he won it like if you were going to sell this guy you would want to have him watch the texas tape it was neat because texas was good the thing about what texas was they were bigger guys it seemed like and then I watched two more games, and these games, I watched the Oregon game, and I watched the Michigan game. And I watched 
both of those in I watched both the whole game. Okay. This is where me as a fan, I'm I'm getting to appreciate more of an understanding about quality of competition. Because when I saw them play Oregon, that is where I saw him have his equal. If that's making any kind of a sense. <clears throat> I don't know what Oregon's defense was about, you know. But that was his equal. Whatever was coming at him, because Penix was in a hurry. He did his job against one of the best teams out there. <clears throat> but Penix was in a hurry. I will say a side note, I feel sorry for any football team that signs Penix. I would never want to sign him. And I can see why people like that wide receiver, Rome. I mean, because he built up Penix a lot. But that's a side note. The thing about it is, is like I said earlier, his pass blocking is what is going to be intriguing to teams. It's not his run blocking. And he's fast. Like, and in the Oregon game was over all four games. It, it, like this guy can pull, right? Now we might be venturing away with that with the new offense under uh, Arthur Smith, but he's athletic enough to pull, right? And he does different things. And he hits like on 60 to 75% of them. Like sometimes he's even there too fast, you know? Um, that zone offense, that zone blocking with the run offense, you know, he can get up into the linebackers, but it seems like it's useless. Like they had that other guy, Troy, so they – they just did not run that much to the right. And the Oregon game was by far the most where I noticed of all four games. Or it just seems like this guy is just he he'd be up there blocking a linebacker in the a lot where the play is just way far away. They just weren't they just didn't run that way. Maybe that's because he's left handed. I don't know. The quarterback. Maybe that's their scheme. But He's fast enough on the poles, and he gets out there plenty of time, but it's for no reason. It was a very strange game. I'm going to put the link down in there, and uh, you judge for yourself. And then I watched him play Michigan, and this is where him against the defensive scheme, defensive players against Michigan, he lost. Okay? So this is the best against the best. And so you can take that for what it is. He was going against um, the national champion, Michigan Wolverines, number one, better know that, and going against Chris Jenkins. So, um, when I saw that, that's when I got to the point where I was thinking, like, well, he seems – he's very exciting. Like, some of the times with his hand usage, it almost looks like he swings on the guy, you know? I only really seen him down a couple times. Uh, that was in the Oregon game. Uh, one time was – just got beat down, and then the second time he overextended, you know? And now I'm starting to understand. I can see this shit with the overextending and how they get pinched. One out of 18 plays, you know, and I get it now more. So um, as far as we are right there at that 98th pick or whatever we ended up receiving from Kenny, Kenny fuck pick it. Um, that's right about where the consensus is. He's going to crack that 100, you know, so maybe he might be the third round. Uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, you give me a comment. Tell me what you think. Please press like on the video. It helps me out. And have a great week, Steeler Nation. Subscribe. Please, I really do appreciate all your shares. AMF.